Hi! So before I hop on this Tekken 7, I thought that I should do a video review for the new Dragon Ball Super episode. I think this was 93. Yeah, I think it was 93. Um, so I, I was, I finished watching, you know, I wanted, I was going to watch, uh, not I was going to, I finished watching uh, Game 2 again of the Warriors uh, Cavs series. And um, for my opinion, um, I think there is one thing Cleveland can do to like, Make it competitive, maybe even win it, but um, I don't want to say what that is just yet. I'll I'll wait for I'll wait for game three and then maybe even until the series is over and then I'll talk about that. But yeah, anyway, so I was watching that and you know it was a good game and then obviously like the third quarter, Golden State just like goes fucking ballistic as they usually do. I mean that that third quarter is when they always just like fucking explode and just shoot like what the fuck and fuck you threes, especially Steph and Katie, especially Steph. Steph has been doing that for like the last three years. Anyway, so I finished that game and then, uh, you know, Golden State ended up winning by 20. But, you know, that first half of that game, like in the first game also, sorry, not in the first game, but like in the first quarter of game one, you know, it was pretty competitive. And, you know, once the game was over, I was like, uh, oh, now I got to watch Dragon Ball Super. Now I got to watch another episode that's going to frustrate the hell out of me. But interestingly enough, th this episode was not that bad and I might even dare say to I might dare say to say I might dare say to say is that correct English that it might even be a good episode maybe even a great episode that's not to say I didn't have my problems especially there was one problem that just like made me like like really mad um but the episode didn't really like usually when I watch a DBS episode I'm like I'm just like bitching and ranting and doing all this stuff on Twitter and in my streams and you know it's gotten to the point where I don't even make video reviews for it anymore because people know how I feel and if you want to see my thoughts anyway you can just like follow me on Twitter at Saiyan underscore Z3 and you can follow me there but uh yeah surprisingly and interestingly enough like for a change like this was an I can say that I in in some capacity liked this episode of Dragon Ball Super and quite a bit um so yeah I mean we'll just get right into it uh yeah, so, like, the first thing, like, in the episode that, I, that you know, popped out to me was that Piccolo addressed what was said about evil people back in the Machin Buu arc, so, um, I don't know, did I say that correctly? Yeah, yeah, the episode addressed what Piccolo said about evil people back in the Machin Buu arc, yeah, okay. So, if you guys have been watching my videos, you guys know what I'm talking about, um, when Piccolo had that talk with Majin Vegeta back in the Majin Buu arc, he said that evil people... They go through like this cleansing process, and then their their memories are rewritten so that they that they become new people, um, and that was actually addressed in, at the beginning of this episode. So I'm like, hell yeah, fuck yeah, we're getting an we're, we're we're getting an explanation for you know like why Frieza still has his body. So I was like, yeah, all right, let's let's fucking go. That's a good thing. I'm 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 glad that they addressed that because again, like that moment was so important for Majin Vegeta when he sacrificed himself in that moment. Of course, um, you know. Bob is able, still able to bring his, you know, his his body back because you can't do all of that in one day. But um, yeah, so you, you know, we get an explanation. At at the same time, though, I still kind of find it a little bullshit that Frieza hasn't been cleansed in over sixteen plus years. So like when Goku defeated uh, Frieza, there was the one year right that passed. Um, then they had yeah so. Yeah, there was the one year that passed between when uh, Frieza was defeated, if, I, if I'm if i not mistaken. Maybe two or three years. I, maybe, yeah, maybe two years it was. I, I don't, I'll have to go back and read the manga and remember. But it was between when Frieza was defeated and when Trunks showed up. I think it was like a year that had passed. Then when Trunks shows up and tells him about the androids, another three years passed for training, right? Then the Cell arc happens and the, that happens within like the span of 10, 11 days. Then seven years pass after that, and now it's been like five years plus since Dragon Ball Super started. So that's almost like 16 years plus of like since Frieza has been defeated back on uh, Namek, right? Um, the fact that Frieza hasn't been cleansed in that amount of time is still kind of bullshit to me. Um, but then again, at the same time, he was just resurrected in the in the revival of F arc. So the fact that he was resurrected, I mean, I, I I guess can somehow give some give some you know, can you can you can get away with that on you know on some leeway, but 
again, it's it's not too big a problem to me. I'm just glad that we, you know, that they address that and they have an explanation, you know, like Frieza is not repentant and he's taking like so much time or whatever. Because, and the fact that he's not repenting, I, 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 I don't know if that's like a Toei only thing or if that's going to be in the manga version, but uh, I, I don't feel like that detail is necessary or important because if you're good, you don't, you shouldn't be able to repent I feel like if you if your memories are going to be re rewritten anyway. So anyway, uh, so yeah, they're talking about Frieza and they're gonna you know revive him and have him be the tenth member instead of Boo. But uh, you know when they when they I, I I like that conversation because they think strategically about how to motivate Frieza to fight with them instead of against them and not to betray him or him being Goku um, and. One thing that I, when I was initially like watching the conversation, the episode was that one thing that should have been said is that if Frieza does anything to impede their chances, that he'll be killed on the spot by Goku, Vegeta, or Beerus, or maybe even Whis, right? Um, but and you know that is obviously talked about later. That was obviously talked about, I think, like maybe like two or three minutes like later into the conversation. When Vegeta goes like, you're not usually your usual overconfident self. You can just resurrect Frieza for like 24 hours or whatever, using the same rule that uh, Grandpa Gohan and Goku used when they came back. Um, but it's interesting though because you know that opens up possibilities. Like if Frieza, like if he if he's resurrected, what's stopping him from going to another universe and trying and trying to take over and build an empire there should universe seven lose you know like something that should have been something that i i feel like should have been talked about like what if, what are the chances like frieza just ditches universe seven and maybe like goes ahead and joins like another team and tries to build a universe in there like that should have been like an option that i i feel like that should have been talked about for sure but i again i don't think it's like like it's some major like problem out there it's just something that i feel like it should have been there so it's like a very small problem a problem but I wouldn't even call it a problem. Maybe more like an oversight. I guess it's 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 not a big deal, but I do feel like it's a detail that should have been talked about. Because again, this is Frieza we're talking about. We're talking about someone who tends to be very opportunistic, um, as we saw when when he tried to you know kill Goku behind his back. So back on Namek. So um, yeah, like I said, it's it's not it's not too big a problem. Not even really a problem. I would say just something that should have been talked about. Um, but other interesting information came up. There's a god of destruction that is confirmed stronger than Beerus, and uh, there is a mortal in one of the universes that no god of destruction can defeat, which sounds amazing and dope as fuck. Um, I'm hoping it's not Jiren. I'm, I'll be okay if it's Jiren, but the only reason I'm hoping it's not Jiren is because I feel like Jiren is just like the obvious choice for that. Um, hoping it's not him, I'm hoping that they'll like betray our expectations a little bit and have it be someone else but uh i mean if it's jiren then whatever fine but i mean that's cool to know i'm i feel like jiren i'm, I'm probably gonna like his character a lot um like with hit and cauliflower like i i i hope they don't Toei totally doesn't flanderize his character but uh i don't know we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that and so you know while they're talking about like trying to revive frieza there's like a spy watching them who te who ends up being from universe 7 which i think is pretty dope uh, the the fact that universes are doing like shit to like find out about the other universe like what they're doing uh, the other universes and what they're doing and you know Catal and universe 4 are just like I, I I like that it characterizes them a little bit I think universe 4 was called the underhanded universe like that was their trait which again I think the traits are fucking dumb but I mean I guess this is a good example of like illustrating like that epithet or that title or that tagline for them Another thing that I liked was that we saw Enma, King Enma, he, he comes back. Um, I think the voice sounds a little different, I'm not sure. I, I forget who voiced him. Yeah, it was, no, no, it was Joji Yanami, I think, back in uh, back in Z, who voiced <clears throat> who voiced uh, Enma. And, you know, obviously he was the voice of Kaio as well, but I think, like, they got a new voice actor for Enma. I, I, uh, I'll, I'll have to check that, but um, I guess we get some confirmation about some things, though. Like, the afterlife that we all know and love, the one that you know, Kaio lives in the the one that the Kaioshin realm is above. Like that afterlife doesn't overlap with the other with the other universes, which I think that works because you know there are other, there 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 are other gods spread across spread across like other universes. So the fact that the King Enma doesn't see like oversee like every which universe, I think that that works, especially because that there are different uh, 
Kaioshin like realms, so to speak, or Kaioshin worlds. So I think that works all in all. One interesting or like uh, small line of uh, dialogue that, that I had a problem with was that Enma says that he should take care of Frieza outside of Earth so that he doesn't have to deal with them. Um, but Enma, like, he takes souls from across the all of Universe 7, like, from Namek, when, when all those people died on Namek, uh, all the people that Boo killed, or he was killing when he became Kid Boo at the end of the arc, so... I don't know, it's, it's just a very small line of dialogue that I that I had a problem with. But again, like, it's not like a huge, like, big problem that's just, like, tugging, like, at my soul or at my heartstring like usual, so... Uh, it's just, a, like, like what I was saying before, it's like a very small, like, slight oversight. Uh, but then we, now we get to, like, the part of the, the episode that just, like, this was, like, the big problem for me, uh, which was the whole cauliflower kale, no, not, not, not the cauliflower stuff, the kale stuff, I should say. So they once again reference the whole retarded, stupid, Super Saiyan back bullshit again, like, you have to focus your key in your back and you become Super Saiyan, which I, again, it's fucking stupid, and I hope, I really hope it's not in the manga. Um, and also there, like, Cauliflower at one point was uh, sounding a little bit, like, too animated and unauthentic and not very genuine when she was talking at one point. Um, but yeah, I mean, that whole Cauliflower, like, voice thing was just, again, a small oversight, just a very small, like, nitpick detail problem, if you could. I, I, I hate to call my things, like, nitpicks because nitpicks seems like it's unnecessary, but I do, I do feel like it is necessary because I feel like... Every detail, every detail is is important, and that's and generally every detail is important in whatever it is. But uh, you know, I, like it's it's not like such a big problem. It's something that can be corrected like that. So, and you know, it's it's it can be like unintentional or whatever. Anyway, so yeah, it's just like a very small problem, like with the two other things. Anyway, uh, Kale screaming like makes my ears bleed. Um, but the problem that I, the, the, the biggest problem that I had with this episode was that Kale going Super Saiyan, her hair turns green just fucking because. It's so stupid. It, like, like, I, like, that, that, that is, like, one of the biggest cardinal, like, offenses I think, like, Dragon Ball has ever done. Just straight up changing Super Saiyan hair just because. Um, that being said, like, I, I, I don't really like Kale because she's, like, jealous of Kaba and usually, like, the shy, quiet, like, not a types I don't I don't I don't really like those types of characters with like the high pitched like cute girl voices like I don't it's not my kind of it's not those aren't my kind of female characters I, I like more like the cauliflower major Kusanagi Verona from drawer like those Android 18 Sukuyo like those kinds of characters those kind of female characters those strong like independent sort of types I don't I don't really like this Hanada kale like type characters um but yeah, I mean, the fact that her hair went green when she turned Super Saiyan is just, that is just like a cardinal sin. Especially, uh, like, uh, like you're talking about Super Saiyans. You're not talking about, like, rules that were mentioned in, like, one-off panels, like, in the manga. You're talking about something that is very, like, fucking, like, blatant. Like, Super Saiyans, when they transform, their hair turns gold. And now it's just fucking green. So... That, that 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 was definitely like something that really made me mad. But again, like I said at the start of this episode or at the start of this video, I wasn't pulling my hair out because everything else had been pretty pretty good and pretty like pretty okay, pretty not damn bad. So the fact that like, this happened, of course, was like you know the green hair is just like something that that's very like aggravating, but uh, it's, it's something that I detest. But it's not like I'm bitching and ranting like how I usually do when it comes to this series. Um, and the other thing about Kale is that she's really female Broly at this point. Uh, she has the same attacks and she has the same dialogue too. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that just because like Herms and uh, if you guys follow Chris Sukento on Twitter, I'm not saying that just because they said it. I'm saying that because it's literally like, like yeah, it's the same lines in the same attacks. And so Broly in some capacity is uh, canon, or canon in some respect at this point. Canon and Broly in some capacity is canon and it, Broly in some capacity is canon in some respect. Yeah, there we go. Um, which again, I don't hate Broly. I don't hate movie ape Broly. Uh, 
And actually, I, I probably should do a video about Bro on Broly like very soon because I do feel like there are some things like yeah, I do think like he's not like very good, but I do think there are some good points to his character that people overlook, especially in movie eight, movie movie uh, ten, and movie eleven completely destroy him and make him worthless. Whatever, fine. But movie eight Broly, if you watch it in Japanese, he's actually not that bad a character. He's pretty. I I don't know if I'd say good. But he's pretty. He's not. He's not what Broly tards or like muscle tards like make him out to be. That's for damn sure. Anyway, anyway, that's like a whole another discussion. So, yeah, Kayla's basically female Broly, and uh, she attacks. Uh, she, she attacks Cobb at one point, and then Cauliflower seems to transform into Super Saiyan two, which I have mixed feelings about because one, like I like Cauliflower and. She's absolutely killing it. On the other hand, I feel like it's kind of dumb that she got Super Saiyan 2 so quickly. Because the thing about Super Saiyan transformations are that they're achieved through... Generally achieved through rage, right? Um, like how we saw with Gohan, it was achieved through rage. Um, I guess you can achieve it through training. Uh, like how Vegeta and Goku did. I don't imagine that they got angry and transformed into Super Saiyan 2. Nor do I even imagine that's what happened with Super Saiyan 3. But... Um, yeah, the fact that Cauliflower went Super Saiyan 2, it's kind of like, she got it so fast, you know? And that, again, that could be a Toei only thing. I I, 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 I want to say it's a Toei only moment, but I'm not sure. I mean, there's no, obviously, there's no way for me to tell, but I have a, I don't know, I'm 50-50 on whether, personally, like my gut feeling, I'm 50-50 on whether it's a Toei only moment or if uh, Toriyama put that in his story script, or if Toritaro made it, so... But again, you know, Broly uh, is generally a cell tier opponent. Um, wh what was the whole thing like? Is Bro yeah, yeah. There's that whole debate whether Broly is stronger than Cell. I think uh, it's been a long time since I visited that like whole argument. It's been like what, like five, four years, I think, maybe three. Um, and I think I remember saying that Broly is stronger than Perfect or Cell in his third form. But not super perfect cell. So I yeah I think I think that's what I that was my whole um, yeah that that was my whole uh, take on the Broly cell debate that Broly is stronger than third form cell but super perfect cell is stronger than Broly and whatever form um, yeah I think yeah I think that was my uh, whole thing about that anyway um, so then we go to the whole Goku and Frieza conversation which I thought was pretty damn good. Um, one thing that I found interesting, though, and again, this is, like, a very, like, dicey situation, was that, uh, Frieza says that if I join you, right, I want to be resurrected for good. So, the thing is that Frieza asks for Earth's Dragon Balls to resurrect them if they win. So, the one thing that I'm really hoping here is that if the resurrection rules are remembered, right, Goku, Goku agreed to, like, a great move. So, what I'm talking about is that, you know, if you guys remember... Earth's Dragon Balls can only resurrect a person once. And Frieza already came back with them back in Revival of F, right? So the thing is, if he already came back with them in Re Revival of F, he can't be resurrected by Earth's Dragon Balls. Now, that's only... Now, again, this is only going to work, right? This whole thing is only going to work if the, res if the resurrection rules are remembered. Um... So yeah, like if the resurrection rules are remembered, like Goku's a like that's it that shows like Goku's intelligence. On the other hand, if it doesn't, if they aren't remembered, then Goku's like a fucking idiot. And the whole just this whole setup for like great explanations are not gonna make much fucking sense. It's gonna um well the not not it's not that it's not gonna make much well the, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a plot hole, of course. So yeah, it won't, it won't make sense. But the setup for like Goku to like pull like a like a great move or trying to remind the audience of a rule of the Dragon Balls that they don't remember. If Frieza is in fact resurrected for good, then I feel like it's just that's all put to waste. It's such a great opportunity, and I really hope that it happens. That Frieza is just dumbfounded. Like he has the Earth's Dragon Balls. He goes like. Revive me for good! And then he was like, nope, can't revive you anymore. 
you've already come back once with these Dragon Balls, and he's like, no, that would be amazing, and so, um, yeah, Frieza comes back for 24, what's interesting about this, though, is that Frieza comes back for 24 hours, so, the, the length of the match, the length of the, you know, the, the Battle Royale, the Tournament of Power, it's going to be 48 tacks, which is, if you guys remember, one hour, so, what are, what's going to happen in those extra 23 hours, I wonder? I really hope, like, you know, Frieza doesn't come back for good, because that would just be... Oh, man, like, th that would just, like, make me so sad about, like, this whole show. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a good opportunity to... to uh, there's a good uh, crescendo, or a good uh, coup de gras, if you will, that will happen. If, in fact, that they remember the rules that Earth's Dragon Balls cannot resurrect them more than once, so... There was, but yeah, I, generally I found the, the the conversation between Goku and Frieza pretty good. Uh, I I felt like at one point there was a bit forceful dialogue, a too di a bit too forceful when uh, Goku calls Frieza evil for trying to expose his weakness. I don't, which, you know, his weakness being his curiosity in any fighter, be they good or evil, his propensity to let strong fighters go because they have potential to be great later on or whatever, right? Um, and again, I, I feel like that's just a bit too forceful because I feel like it's in the right mind of any fighter to try and expose their fighter, their opponent's weak points. So that's just my opinion. And it's a very valid opinion too, if, I'm, if I do say so myself. So yeah, anyway then, so like I said, the, at, the end, at the end of the episode, the Universe 4 spy goes and reports back to Catella. And he has some plan to make disappear, to make Beerus disappear, but if I had to guess, it's him about, like, that new episode about getting Cedra to recruit those assassins. And I didn't talk about this, actually, about one of the previous episodes, but I'm glad to know that Cedra can actually, like, is strong and can actually, like, wipe out planets, you know, thanks to that earlier uh, episode that we saw of him, like, wiping out that, um, that city um, back in Universe 9, so... Yeah, anyway, but, yeah, I, 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 I wonder if, like, the whole Catella spy thing, I, could that be a, could that be a, um, a, a universe, uh, or a Toei only moment thing? Maybe. It's interesting, though, you know, it's Universe 4 and Universe 9, those are, like, the, the, the twin universes, the ones that are opposite each other, which, I, which I kind of find, which I think kind of, makes sense in, in in some regard because uh you know universe four is underhanded and universe nine is like the worst out of them all if i'm not mistaken so like universe four schemes and universe yeah so works well together in that respect um but yeah i mean that's my uh, review for the episode um not yeah like i said before and it's actually not a bad episode it's like I'm 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 very happy that I'm that I wasn't raging and ranting like how I usually do. Or I I'm I'm glad that I didn't come away from the episode disappointed. Is basically or I didn't come away from, from the episode feeling like I was disappointed or that the episode was meh. I legitimately felt that this was you know a very solid episode. And like I said, I might even say that it was a great episode, a good episode even. So yeah. Good, you know. Kudos to the writer. I wonder. Uh, let's uh, find out who the uh, writer was. The script writer. Uh, I hope I can find this. Uh, One second. Oh shit! Did I ever? Did I ever score? Oh shit! Did animators corner like get like? What up? Okay, so um, let me let me find this episode. One second, guys. Let me find the episode number so I can, like, look up the... Okay, go down. 
down. Okay, yeah, so it's okay. So I'll look up Dragon Ball Super episode 93 script writer. Oh, okay. So hopefully, hopefully, a uh, Kanzenshu script. Yeah. See, even Kanzenshu is like liking this a lot. So. Yeah. Okay. So I hope uh, if if you guys know who the script writer is, or if you guys can find out for me, that would be great. <laughs> I was imitating the guy from. Uh, office space room. I unintentionally doing that. Anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments, in the, or leave your thoughts in the comments below, and, uh, I'm gonna be on Kanzenji for a little while and then play Tekken 7. Yeah. Alright. Oh, and, uh, I'll try, I'll try and, uh, set up the OBS studio on my, uh, uh, my PC so I can, um, or my brother's PC so I can, like, try to stream Tekken 7 later. Anywhere. Thank you guys for watching, always, and uh, hopefully <laughs> Super continues to be like this and even better, hopefully. So yeah.